Hi, so welcome back to the 2024 Quick Show Boat. We're down in the engine room, so we're going to have a little look at what we've got in the engine room, as it's obviously very different to our standard boats. So we've got no diesel engine on this, um, but we have in fact got a 6.2 kVA diesel generator, which obviously when the batteries get down to a certain percentage, that will kick in to obviously recharge the system and run the electric motors. There's not really a system out there that can be all electric because there's no not enough charging facilities on the canals, obviously. So all the electric propulsion has to have either a diesel generator or a hybrid system. We've chose to go more of the all electric system with the diesel generator. Before it goes to the show, we're going to have hopefully at least three or four weeks of, of testing and cruising so we can actually have some figures for the show so we know exactly what it is doing. Um, we've got two shunts on this boat so we've got the main electrics from the Victron side which will tell us all what we're using throughout the boat and there's also one that's linked to the main Vita system um, so they, they're sort of running separately as two different systems but they are actually running off the same batteries so we've got lithium batteries on this which is doing the domestic side and the propulsion side a lot of discussions on the batteries we we was umming and iron whether to go you know my feelings was sort of 600 amp hours would be enough to do the boat the customer really felt that he wanted some extra in reserves for the summer months when the solar's good you know he wants to store that power for as long as possible so the extra battery will help store that power which i can see his point you know i mean it's one of them you've got to obviously to fill the batteries back up you've got to charge it longer because there's more batteries um, vice versa it lasts longer so you don't have to charge them so so frequently so it really is <laughs> a funny scenario and only the more and more electric boats out there that have done correctly um the more people will learn about it and the more we can tinker with the system. Again I've used all Victron equipment for including the batteries so anything domestic side is all through Victron so if there is any issues or any problems everything's tailor-made from one sort of company so we've got good backup there so if there is any issues we can we can deal with those quite quick and easy it's all one manufacturer and then obviously on the propulsion side um, that's all through the Vitus E-Line system and the Vitus generator. So obviously the main engine system is 48 volts. So this is where we're converting that power from 48 down to 12 volts so that we can run all our lighting systems and all the more domestic electrics off. These are the smart controllers for the solar. So we've got two of those as well. We've actually got... 1950 watts of solar so hopefully during the summer months that's gonna and catching up on the battery bank we've also got the generator battery there and that's running bilge pumps and stuff as well so that's got its own um, battery charger as well so that can't run down so that you know should any issues happen you've always got a good battery there with its own charger um, obviously the heating on this boat is our standard Webasto, so that's all in on the opposite side there, all neat and tidy, easy accessible again. So yeah, that's about it for the engine room, so we'll go inside and have a look at the electrical cupboard, uh, where all our main distribution is, um, buzz bars and where our 12 volt panels will be eventually. Um, so we'll have a look at that and we'll have a look at the batteries. So the main components I suppose you'd say in here is you we've got the isolation transformer there which is 3600 watts so that's basically for your galvanic protection and then we've got the 10 kilowatt uh, quattro inverter charger so that's your inverted power so we've got 10 kilowatts there so we've got plenty of inverted power so that does all the charging of the lithium batteries with the BMS through generated power or if you're on shore power obviously we've got the solar chargers that i just showed you in the engine room which will take care of the solar we've also got the 
main DC distributor. So they're basically like a, a big a buzz bar, a DC buzz bar. Then you look at the canvas side for the electronics as well, which we've got. So your Balfister control and then your, your Morse control. There's a separate shunt for the Vetus side, the E-line controls. This is going to be two single dinettes on each side, which a customer wanted, so it's not like we've we made the customer have that. Uh, that was his choice anyway. Anybody who came to Crick last year would have seen Coffin Dodger, which was a very similar setup. He fell in love with that boat, and you know that's what he wanted, a boat similar. So you've got 25.6 amp for each battery, so obviously the two of them combined is your 48 volts, which is what we need for the E-Line system. It, it's a 48 volt system. So we've got four individual battery banks all linked together, individually fused, and then they're also isolated in the electrical cupboard so we can, we can shut them down. They've all also got BMS built into them, battery management systems. So if there is any issues or whatever, the batteries literally shut themselves down. But like I said, you know, it is important if you're going to go down this route that you learn about the batteries and, and how to manage them properly. Because we've had to individually charge every battery to make sure that when the system's first turned on, everything's balanced and equal. So I say, when you go to lithium, it, it is quite a bit different to your standard boats and your standard charging systems. Uh, like I said, every cable has to be identical in length, which is why you don't want to be trying to do it in a confined space and trying to lose long lengths of cable. Um, as you can see, this is all quite nice and neat. They're well secured, the batteries, you know, everything's good, but the front of the dinette will probably be removable. The bases will be removable, so if we need to, we can do any testing or whatever we want to on these quite easily. Um, hopefully, you know, we, we won't need to, you know, I mean, the system's gone in well. We've planned it, we've looked at it, we've we spoke to the relevant people, so we're all confident this should work with no, no problems whatsoever. Occasionally things do go wrong, so, you know, but we've got access if we need it. That, to me, was quite an important part of the boat, where the batteries went, um, so... We're quite happy that we've we've got it right, and like I say, without adding tons and tons of ballast. Narrow boats are probably the worst boats we build, to be fair, for, for ballast issues. It doesn't take a lot to get them listing to one side or front to back, you know, and, and there's not a lot of space under bilges and stuff to, to actually put trim ballast. So, you know, I mean, the whole balance of the boat's pretty good, to be fair, so... I'm not envisaging any problems with, with listing of the boat. We're going to go into more detail on a later video, um, but I felt that it was good to show you the basics. And like I say, we're going to do some testing, obviously, when the boat's in the water. Um, so, yeah, again, we will have a lot more um, statistics and, and what we hope the boat will be able to achieve and running hours and you know what we're getting off the solar with this amount of battery power and that generator for normal five six seven hours a day cruising especially in the summer i feel that you know that should be ample if you're looking for continually cruising sort of 10 plus hours a day there is going to be quite a few limitations so I feel that's important that customers should know this and should understand that. If you want to constantly cruise and cruise and cruise, maybe electric propulsion is not for you. You know, stick with a diesel engine, you know, it still works, it's still fine. The, the real good thing about it that I do like, you know, you've finally got a real good electrical system on the boat inside. With a generator there, you've always got the backup of the, the generator. So to be fair, uh, this is a system I would probably go for myself, to be honest. So. Um, that says something. Um, it's not the cheapest, but obviously, again, we'll go into costs and stuff at the end on the, on the finished video when we know the exact costs and need to charge on a similar vessel. So we'll give all that information out on the on a later video. With this sort of power output, you can't afford any mistakes. So, you know, it's important that everything is checked and checked. Um, and it has been. And, you know, we're confident that everything will be fine.